Hey, and welcome to the Open Mic Podcast. And on today's episode, we're going to be discussing how to build a lucrative speaking business. Now, for many entrepreneurs, thinking about becoming a public speaker can be somewhat daunting. You know, where to start? Sometimes, you know, the emotions of fear about stepping on that stage, you know, can be overwhelming. And, you know, I've met a lot of people in my career and even the people that we coach today. And they just, you know, they say, Mike, I just can't get going or I feel held back. I know I've got so much to offer. So, you know, the power of being able to convey your message, you know, touch people and the, with the value, with your experience that you've built up over your careers can be, you know, extremely rewarding, not just professionally, but personally as well. And, you know, to open up more lucrative opportunities and deal for, flow for your core business. I certainly know from, you know, my speaking career that dates back all the way to 2002, the amount of deal flow that's hit my desk because I've been in that, not necessarily because I've actually gone looking for it. Um, you know, it does position as a Authority. But, you know, what I always warn people about is with so many so-called gurus out there, you know, how are you really differentiating yourself? How can you create that authority to start to fill those speaking events and engagements? And, you know, these are all the topics plus much, much more we're going to be speaking about in today's Open Mic podcast. And without further ado, I'm sort of really privileged and we get some real big hitter guests on here and Jackie is exactly one of those. I'm, I'm super privileged to be welcome to the show. The amazing Jackie McLennan mm -hmm. from Pure Potentials, uh, based out of Calgary in Canada. Um, so welcome to the show, Jackie. Thanks for taking the time out of your busy schedule over there today. How are you? Oh, I'm super excited to be here, Mike. Thank you so much for having me. I love uh, the fact that I get to talk to somebody from your neck of the woods because the accent is one of my favorites. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, hope, I hope there's more value than just the accent. In, oh, in this. Well, that's a great starting point. I'm a, I'm a speaker trainer, so I love the uniqueness right off the hop. Of course, it appeals to me. No, I appreciate that. Well, it's great. <laughs> And it's certainly fantastic to have you on the show, Jackie. And as I say, it's a topic that's close to my heart as a public speaker. Uh, I know we had a little chat off air before. Um, and I remember the first time I got asked to speak, it was for the NACFB. So that's the National Association of Commercial Finance Brokers. Way back in 2002. And if you listen to this podcast, it's dated September 2018 as a recording. So it's 16 or so years ago. And I won't eat into too much time, but I just want to share, if you're sat there thinking, I can't do this, I just want to share this sort of 60 seconds and remit. I got asked to cover like a side show, like a side sort of room with about 30 people in. Uh, and I had to do like a 15, 20 minute educational slot. Two days before the event, I get a call from the NACFB. Hey, can you do more of a key line slot? The keynote speaker's out or, or whatever it would be. And I'm saying, yeah, sure. I've got experience in speaking. Uh, never done this before. Uh, and I said, yeah, what is it? And I'm expecting it to sort of be maybe double the people, like 60 people. They said, oh, it's only main stage. It's 45 minutes. And, uh, you know, there's like 400 people there. And I'm like, what? So I sat down with my coach at the time. And I said, hey, we've got to prepare for this differently. You know, it's not a 15 minute. Uh, and my legs were jelly for three days. For the two days going down there and the moment before I went there. But, you know, I adjusted it. I prepared. I got up on the stage. And, you know, 10 minutes in, I absolutely, I'm not saying I killed it, Jackie, but I certainly <laughs> did a a lot better than I thought I was going to do and that was my first ever attempt at doing a public speaking event and a keynote 400 plus people at the motorcycle museum in Birmingham which is like a major center in the UK and uh, here's me blagging my way through it hoping to do a sideshow and ended up as the main ticket uh, and my heart I, I still think it's beating now 16 years later so I share that with the audience before I bring Jackie back in and just tell you a little bit more about it purely simply because if you're sat there interested in public speaking and you think you can't do it you know, at the time I was a 32 year old kid, green behind the ears, never done it. And, you know, you, you get put in those positions, take those opportunities. And I know Jackie's going to speak about that more later. So since 2009, Jackie's been the president and founder of Pure Potentials based out of Calgary um, in Canada and has mission to connect speakers to audiences, business owners to clients and individuals to the life enhancing information that they need to achieve the goals. Uh, so Pure Potentials ultimately helps speakers expand the reach and also to help you reach your full potential. Um, so hopefully that's a bit of an accurate remit, Jackie. So but I really like you in your own words in that awesome Canadian accent as well to tell us a little bit more about your career, Jackie, and how you arrived at this point and how you help speakers today. Oh, I love it. Thank you so much. And you know what's really funny? And I just kind of thought of this as I was listening to you. One of the things that I always tell people, and you just reiterate, reiterated this, was never turn down the opportunity to be on mic. So never turn down a mic is what I always say. Right. So when you ask me to be on this podcast, I literally couldn't turn you down because you're a mic. <laughs> <laughs> the <Yeah>. open mic. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, you know, I actually had a bit of a crazy background and not a straight path like most entrepreneurs, yourself included, how we come to these things. But I spent a lot of my career as a theater producer and performer. And so you are uh, on stage, you are, uh, you know, basically building this business. And I don't think that there's anything that's going to teach you more about marketing or building a business other than being in the arts, because there is zero money. <laughs> <laughs> and grit to get you through to what you need to happen and, and those are two key points for any business you know speaking business or yeah. otherwise and you've got to deal with the, the fears the insecurities the spotlight on you and it's just it was an interesting way to get into this business yeah absolutely um, and sometimes the rejection as well Jackie isn't it oh, you can think, oh if I get rejected am I any good am I worth yeah. and that knocks your self-confidence as well doesn't it oh I thought rejection is a huge part of it but if you think about it this way Mike um, if you're selling or making an offer from stage or trying to be that keynote, you are, if you're crushing it, you're going to be successful 10 or 20% of the time, yep. which means 80 or 90% of the time you're being rejected. <laughs> and I know I don't want it to sound negative, but it's such a freeing thought if you go, wow, I get, I get a lot of this rejection. And for me, it's nothing more than really deepening my relationship with an audience because if they're rejecting me, I'm not meeting their needs. So I've got to understand their needs better. And if we get to a place where we're looking at their objections, obviously we're going to sell better and get more gigs. Absolutely. Yeah. So I did this speaking or I did the uh, theater for a really long time. I just kind of came to a place where I wanted to um, do something more meaningful. So I started some networking groups. I actually uh, have an international speaking organization, which with about 30 clubs throughout Canada and the U S right now. Yep. So I want to have these places, these grassroots places for people just to get up there and get through uh, maybe fear and nerves the first time they've done it. So they don't have to do what you did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just blag it. Yeah. <laughs> That's not for everybody. And it may turn some people away from doing it, but also, I mean, it's really important to me for people to get their message out there. Yeah. You know, that's why it's like, if the people are getting that, what, like the things that you've gone through, only you've gone through them and people need to hear them from your voice. Yeah. So being able to, to facilitate in that and to have something that's more than just like a comedic theater production, but a human being's message is why I made that transition. Really. Oh, really? No, that's great. And the location, Calgary, have you always lived there? Is that something you've resettled down with? Are you a local girl? What, tell us a little bit about your, your locality. Well, I'm actually, I was born in Edmonton, Alberta, so north three hours, yeah. but then all the way down to Canada, three or to uh, Calgary. But I do spend about 182 days a year in the United States, yep. mostly in the western part. Um, I do a lot of my events out of there. I have a majority of my clients are from the, the U.S., and I think it's Probably because of just logistical matters. They have one, they have 10 times our population. <laughs> Not having many people here. But there's a bigger pool to go up for sure. It's a bigger pool. Oh, and also cool. I think that in the, the culture is, I love, I love my Canadians. I love them. And I love our, the way we are with, um, you know, our healthcare and the way we are a little bit more socialist for sure. But as an entrepreneur, we're born with that burning, fiery passion, that American dream, right? <laughs> so it just suits my personality to do a lot of my work over there. No, absolutely. And I yeah. certainly speak to a lot of influencers in the States, and, you know, get them on the show. And, uh, and uh, you know, I think from just the, the difference between the UK and whether it's Canada or the States, you know, I always say, and I don't mean this as disrespectful to our listeners, you know, very appreciate for our UK and European listeners, but in the space that we're in from our sort of inbound agency and a lot of that onstage digital stuff, so we're probably three years behind the U.S. The, you know, the US or, or, or the Canada. And uh, I just wish that, you know, um, we were a little bit more for, further forward and uh, less skeptical for the U.K. audience. And there's a lot of exciting entrepreneurs in the U.K. Uh, but certainly, you know, it seems to be a lot more fast paced over, you know, um, in your own backyard. Yeah, no, I, I love it. And I mean, I think, too, that um, one of the things that's very universal about what I do is regardless of uh, you know, how we build these businesses, I think that the passion and the humanity is uh, across the board, Canada, US, wherever you are in the yep. world, we are meant to share our experiences, our wisdoms and our stories. Absolutely. And if you can do that and build a business alongside that, 
It's pretty awesome. Absolutely. Doing what you love. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks ever so much, Jackie. I appreciate you sharing that journey and congratulations on the success yeah. you've had so far because I know how well respected you are in the community and I'm really excited for you to be uh, on the show because I know how much you want to share that message to help people succeed as well. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be an awesome podcast for everybody interested in public speaking and crushing it with events. Again, we sincerely appreciate you being on the show. So let's buckle up and let's dig deep and uh, let's start off. So Jackie, um, we get a, a a wide range of audience uh, to the open mic podcast you know a lot of decision makers a lot of influencers or want to be a influencers who just want to get started so you know you know whether the audience is just getting started more established but just want to tighten up you know um, how can they really find speaking gigs you know wow. what's the secret around that okay well I may, I'm gonna even back that up because I think you've asked something really imperative yeah. and what people um, People think that they're in different spots or on oh, different than this person or that, but what we are is we're on a spectrum of the same journey. We have a message or we have this desire to share. We have a business. We have some kind of goal we want to accomplish. We want to plant our feet on a stage and we want to maximize that opportunity. Yep. The path is, is obviously different for everybody because maybe some people are finding the gigs more easily. Maybe people have trouble with their messaging, but what I've discovered and what I've built in the core body of my work is based around six pillars. And the first thing that I think anybody who wants to be a speaker needs to know is number one, that there are six pillars, which I'll share with you. And number two, where you uniquely fit within these uh, pillars and the challenges that each one of them represents, yeah. right? So, I mean, there's, uh, I'll say them in no particular order because they're not really in a particular order. You can kind of think about them, obviously, like pillars holding up that roof of success. Yeah. And each one of those pillars, I and mean, one can't be made of straw and one can't be made of wood or it will crumble, right? So they're all, all equal, but they all have challenges. So number one, you have to have some kind of a message, right? A lot of people have a, maybe a burning desire. They've had experiences. They have a business. They have a product service, something, but maybe they don't know how to articulate that. And we, I go through a process of core message clarity, which is uh, really important for people to understand that core message deeply for themselves and so that they can not only uh, understand it but articulate it yeah that's so, that's the key thing isn't it that articulate yeah. absolutely yeah if i start anywhere with people it's like your core message clear good let's move on right. <laughs> um, the other thing obviously we've got to have some kind of an offer and yeah. so there's people don't understand that the offer is sometimes them the keynote yeah. and sometimes it's it's them the the coach or what i call like a, it's either you're doing a keynote presentation or a seminar presentation yeah. A selling from stage or, or a, a keynote where you're just doing some talking and you're being paid for that. Regardless of which one, that, which category you fall into, you've got to position this as an offer. And I see this mistake a lot with people where they, they don't. They just think that, hey, I'm a coach. I speak about a wide variety of topics. What do you want me to talk about? It's got to be strategic. You need to know what you're offering. Yeah, absolutely. Um, content, you, you know, we talked a little bit about that. Then another pillar would be this content. And we can dig into any of this that you want to. I just want that first. Yeah, piece. I'll talk about, I want to, I want to expand on the six pillars uh, as oh, we get yeah. through. Yeah, so yeah. Next. I really want to get the value out of each one. But oh, so yeah. getting started, it's, it, would we say, summarize it, let's get that framework in place and let's know what the message is in that. Okay, right. so yeah, that's awesome. Content. I mean, people don't have their speakers tools. They don't even know that they need them sometimes, right? Yeah. How do you get more speaking opportunities if you don't have, you know, your press kits, your bios, your, your reels, uh, your signature talks, which I do a, a lot different than a lot of people, and we'll talk about that as well. Um, one of the things that I think is really important, and uh, maybe a place where you see, this is, this is you. You are one of the experts in this next pillar, which is if you're a speaker nowadays, this is online and off. Correct. And you can't get away from the tech tools and exposure and marketing and all that really rely heavily on having an online presence and understanding and having the right team behind you. Yeah, and that's it. This is huge for me. I mean, it's a huge area of interest because I'm a tech nerd on the side note, but people jump into that without messaging and then they, it, it can cause a lot of, like everything has to be working together. Right? Yeah, and, it, and it's, it's, it's more like, the way I describe it, Jackie, it's more like a formula than it is a calculation. You know, it, it all comes together and works and amplifies it when you get it right. Yeah, I love that. It's like a formula. Yeah, so... Is either your mark the other pillar would either be called you know exposure marketing finding those speaking gigs, and even more so maximizing them. 
because yeah. I think people get exposure. My my God, I, I went out there and I did a 30 day uh, video challenge, Not no offers, no nothing years ago, just trying to see what would happen. I got a ton of exposure and it was really strong and people liked what I was doing, but I didn't have any of the other pillars in place to make money. You know. And that's the big thing. That's just not just in speaking, guys. I mean, you know, for the listeners out there, you know, you've got to get the connect from what you're doing, the value you bring to transfer it into revenue. And I remember when we raised our first venture capital uh, hit, um, uh, Jackie, and, you know, you think, oh, we're great. The management team's great. We've got some signed contracts. We're good to go. You know, and, you know, the VCs come in and oh, the equity partners come in and they're all saying about, you know, how are we transferring this into revenue? How can we max more revenue? I'm thinking, yeah, we're just getting started. But it's always about connecting it to the revenue yes. for the growth. And you've got to get that in there. Uh, and that's, like you say, this, I think too many people are, you know, we can all go out there and say, hey, we want to save the world and we want to deliver value. Of course we do. And we do in a, in a big place. But you've got to eat as well. And you've got to keep a roof over your head. And you've got to build and create wealth and prosperity for not only yourself, but for other stakeholders and shareholders and things like that. So, you know, guys, keep focused on it. And if you want to shoot me a message on our preferred channel of Twitter, you can use it and hashtag the open mic. And we can have a revenue debate or something like that. And I can maybe give you some resources to help you sort of connect the dots between what you do and how to translate that into revenue and i'm sure jackie's going to talk about more about that in the six pillars um a quick uh, update as well for those anybody's joining the podcast either late or watching this or skip the video on youtube or on the blog um if you want to head over to pure potentials.com uh, you're going to find out what Jackie does she's going to give you you know this is lots of free template tools on there for speakers where you can sort of you know shortcut the process if you're wondering where do I get started um, you know and how can I get there there's a lot of free template tools on there Jackie isn't that they can download and get started at purepotentials.com yeah and also you know what's on there and it just occurred to me if they click on the trainings tab they can actually go and take a, an online assessment to find out where they're a little bit more strong or maybe weak in these pillars as well and then they can come to, and then start to work in specific areas that's awesome yeah. so that's purepotentials.com ja jackie also has a facebook group which is facebook.com forward slash groups um and then that would be uh, the speakers lab uh apologies for that jackie i just had a refresh my memory there so <laughs> facebook Facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash the speakers lab. Um, and you can jump and jump onto there and you can message Jackie and the team. And uh, if there's any guidance you need, they're going to you know, be able to sort of get you started or point you in the right direction for sure. Mm -hmm. So from a getting started point of view, that should sort of wrap that point up there. But moving that through, uh, Jackie, what's the best way to maximize speaking opportunities? Oh, well, <laughs> again, it's going to go back to understanding where you're strong and you're weak on yeah. the pillars. But for me, I always start, there's a ton of variables in every single opportunity. Yep. And the first thing that I would do, because I, I run a lot of events, um, I, I, have a speaking, I have a speaking organization and I see people come to me with zero knowledge of me, my organization, or the needs and requirements of the event. Yep. And so the simplest and easiest thing to do is to find out what they're all about. It's classic business. It's what's in it for them, right? I mean... <laughs> It doesn't change just because you want to be a speaker and people forget that fact, it, yeah. they do. And so when you figure this out, then you want to make sure that you can take your topic and not change your core body of your teachings or your core message, yeah. but massage it so that it has an impact on the people that's, that are listening. Brilliant. So for, yeah. for example, I mean, if I'm going to um, a specific type of, uh, maybe it's a, a confidence building conference. And I'm going to talk about how, you know, I would probably pick out one of these pillars, which would be speaking skills. Obviously, we need to have speaking skills. <laughs> and I might talk about that one as opposed to trying to tell them that they need to come up with an offer if they've never even been confident enough to stand on stage. Yeah. So you're not a square peg in a round hole. You need to understand the objectives of your um, audience, but you also need to understand your speaker's revenue ascension model, meaning yep. what are your offers and where do you put them in the variable of the opportunity? Yeah. Um, having a, having goals, targets, um, Mutual stuff really, which are disciplines. Yes. These are the disciplines. What is it that you want to accomplish after you get off the stage? And a lot of times people just want the applause. And if that's what you want, if you just want to share the message and have that, that's a noble cause too. But what I do, <laughs> is I help people make money with that. And I do a job, you know, I mean, I'm saying this out of sheer fact. Um, my last three events where I was doing promotion and selling from stage, uh, those three events brought in $750,000 for me. So I was pretty happy with the whole thing. That's awesome. <laughs> Congratulations. That's a serious. So three quarters of a million dollars off three events. That's amazing. Yeah. 
in a year. So, you know, you can do, you can float a lot of online stuff and testing and split testing with some well thought out events, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's fantastic. And we're going to get to the six pillars in a moment or two. But before we do, the, the process of positioning and becoming an authority. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I think when I first got asked to speak, I thought, well, who am I? Yeah, I've done, I've done reasonably well. I've been successful. We've been quoted in some national press and things like that. And I think, you know, ultimately, I, I thought I was lesser than, than maybe what the others, I think they thought I were bigger than what I actually were, but I took that opportunity, like you said, and, and took it forward. So I suppose what I want to talk about, there'll be a lot of people sat there, I'm sure, sort of talking about, I'm not an authority, I'm nobody, I've, you know, I maybe I've got a good story, but I don't know how to monetize it, I don't know how to start, or whatever. So I suppose what I'm trying to get to, Jackie, is the process of position and becoming an authority. How would you sort of, you know, help the listeners understand that better? Yeah, well, you've got to get clear on your core message. And the way that you do this, it's, it's, we live in a template society where it's like, here's the six questions that you need to ask. And if you ask them, you'll know your core message. Yeah. But it is not that. It's actually a process based on six questions. And so if you're, if you're, you know, I was watching people, how they come to these epiphanies, how they come to the core and the meat of who they are and how uh, they have that, that clarity of who they are, which makes you an authority. Your story can help other people, but it can't be your story. It has to be a story with relevance. Yes. And to do that, people come to you. You've got to look for patterns. So they're going to come to you and um, you hear this in business all the time. So what do you do? Oh, I'm a coach and I help people with uh, diabetes and I help people with their relationships and I help people get uh, empowered. And they're saying a bunch of symptoms, which is just what they're going to say. And I thought, well, if they're going to say that, let's dig that piece out first. Okay, these are symptoms of what people come to you. Um, And so then what is the real problem? What are they really experiencing? Oh, well, they're experiencing and they will tell me something important, right? A core foundational human need. And then I'll say to them, well, how did you come to know this? And a story will emerge that, and it won't be like, oh, here is when I was born and here's this and this. It's like a snapshot of a turning point and it always works. It comes out when you go through this and it's like, okay, so you know this, well, what did you do to overcome this? And what happens and why that, what people need to do with, with adding onto this is to learn how to craft that into a picture and and to learn to use creativity because we buy from, from emotions. We buy from story. We don't buy from, oh, I did this, this, and this. And when they go through this process, usually they cry. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and then they get over what it is and then the, it's really quite evident what's left yeah what's that picture becomes clearer for them and that they yeah. can start to see it's a bit like the matrix you can see between the numbers and, and it yeah. starts to come in from that side that's a great thing yeah me. your authority because you have if you have a burning desire to start a business to share something from stage you are an authority what yeah. you need to do is dust that gem off inside of you so that people can see it and you're right though mike it starts with you if you don't see it first Here's what I did. I would go on stage and I, when I was performing and I put a mantra in my head, which was this. If they don't like me, they clearly don't understand art. <laughs> <laughs> and when I wrote a book, I had the same mantra slightly altered. I wrote, I don't like this, I'm doubting myself. But I thought, well, Jackie, it's easier to edit crap than to edit nothing at all, right? Absolutely. So you, you get out there and it's small, small wins, small patterns of success looking yeah. at yourself objectively like a product not so much as a as a person with all of our flaws and then fundamentally really caring about your audience absolutely the people that you want to hear your message need to hear it and they will and if you care and stop getting in your own head that's it so looking at all of that put together i mean that's (laughs) that's that's amazing and you know when you look at it and i love the art example of you know if they don't like me (laughs) that's awesome i I think that you know i'm relaying back to some of my times there am i good enough can i do this who would want to listen to me you know i mean slightly off script a little bit jackie but you know i've just had to overcome those self-doubt demons you know and is it just a confidence level do you have to have a personal brand to do this you know just just talk to me a little bit around that oh yeah no i think um your personal brand exists whether you try to suppress it or not (laughs) i have tried to suppress who i am because i am a wacky uh, boisterous person and I can't be anything other than I am. And it makes my life a lot easier when I just go out there and uh, don't try to shove myself into I'm the next Oprah or I'm the next Tony Robbins. You know, yeah. no, I am what I am right now. 
And who needs to hear what I'm going to say is going to glean wisdom from that. And they always do. And it's going to happen for anybody who's brave enough to put their body on stage and draw that giant bullseye on them. Because yeah. we all do. <laughs> and to get out there and um, it's, you know, being kind to yourself. And also, like I said, again, recognizing ourselves more as a, a product, as a person and getting out of our own way because when we do that when we start to think of ourselves as oh what are they thinking about me it's not about them anymore no. <laughs> when it's not about them they don't want to buy from you absolutely <laughs> but but i'll tell you one thing that i remember with one of the first times i came across you in the community online um <laughs> i think you did you know and, and the reason why i say this is because um, what Jackie's just covered there, and it, 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 I'm sure you got it, but in case you missed it, I just want to bring it back, and I hope you don't mind me embarrassing you a little bit here, Jackie. Is that, <laughs> <I know. laughs> uh, and, and, and that is that be yourself, be authentic, make sure you keep it focused on the results that the customer's going to get. But the first time I came across Jackie with that wacky sort of play, uh, I don't know if it was 2014 or 2015, I don't know what it was. But I think you did something like a crazy, ridiculously edited video about 10 ways to survive icon or something like that. Do you know exactly which video I'm talking about, don't you? And um, you put this edit and chop up of a video together. And I'm thinking like, what is this woman? She's off her head. You know, she's crazy. This woman. But obviously the amount of views it got, the and I thought, wow. So go out, connect on Facebook, follow this, blah, blah, blah. And uh, for those who um, missed this, icon used to be the, uh, the infusion soft annual conference. Or I can't remember if it was icon a partner con, I can't remember what it was. Uh, but it was just great. And you, you did all these silly little examples. But what it came through to me was that was you. That was the crazy, wacky, wacky, the, you know, what we got from there. But obviously, there's a lot more professional and serious side to you as well. But you yeah. stood out. You didn't try to mask it. You just went for it. And that's how I connected with you. You know, I don't know if that's three or four years ago or whatever it was. Um, but tell me, was it an icon video or a partner con video? Do you remember what was it? How to survive partner con, right? And one yeah. of the things that, um, it's exactly right. You know, I, there's a group of people, I'm not wanting to pitch to them, but I know I'm going to go in there and build relationships and network. Yeah. What am I going to do? Maybe I should let them know who I am right off the hop so they can make a choice from there, right? So they can walk and say, no! Never know, right? That crazy woman, yeah. It was amazing. Everybody got such a kick out of it. And I actually yeah. pulled that video up in my three-day events and I walk them through the process of, of what that's done for me. Because, I mean, I've met people who just wanted to talk to me simply because they saw that video. Yeah. Um, I did, it shortcutted my networking process a lot. Yeah. Um, and I was looking at, uh, I did a lot of things too. Like I was bringing in certain people that I know are very, were in the community there a lot and making fun of them directly. Yeah, yeah. There was some logistical, strategic things. Like now if I pull them into the joke, I can post on their Facebook, you know. Yeah. There, there was strategy behind it, but it was also, I mean, it's supposed to be fun and enjoyable. Yeah. <laughs> you're standing on a stage and you're sharing with people. There's an element of, of uh, seriousness that gets in people's way. And when you strip that down and you go to the lightness, the fun, sometimes what we're talking about on stage is not fun and it's heavy, um, but there's, it's still important that you're saying it from your heart and from yeah. who you are. It's that authenticity. Oh, yeah, huge. Yeah, brilliant. No, and thanks for that. That really cheered me up in that. After, if it's still on your feet, I'll have to go back and have a little look at that if it's still there. Yeah, I'll pull it out for you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So we, we touched on earlier, Jackie, and for the next sort of 10, 10 or, I don't know, 10, 12, 15 minutes, um, you know, I'd really like to drill down, I don't know, two or three minutes on each of these six pillars. So could you sort of list out what the six pillars of building a successful speaking business are? And what we'll do, if you listen to this on the podcast, on the app, uh, and you don't have a visual of what me and Jackie are doing on the screen here, that's absolutely fine. We'll stick a link to these six pillars as well, plus a link to Jackie's website, which is purepotentials.com. And again, you can jump over to the Facebook at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash the digital lab. Uh, so the apologies, the speakers lab, I do apologize. Facebook.com, the speakers lab. <laughs> Uh, not the digital lab, the speakers lab. Um, uh, but we'll put those links up on the podcast. If you're watching this on the uh, YouTube, the Growth Engine YouTube channel or the blog, again, we'll put the links in here so you can access this sort of stuff. Um, so you can head over to blog.thesuccessor.io or just search Growth Engine or The Successor on YouTube and you will be able to pick out the, from the podcast section um, this uh, particular podcast. Uh, which is how to build a lucrative speaking business with Jackie McLaren. So um, we'll get those links in. So if you miss it now, don't worry, go over to those, 
check it out in the links below. We'll get that sorted for you. So Jackie, what are the six pillars of building on the successful speaking business? If we could list them first and then expand on the meets, that would be awesome. Yeah, sure. So obviously the first one is message being clear in your core message. You have to have some type of an offer, something to sell. If you're building that business, that's, yep. <laughs> you need to have skills. You need to be able to speak. And, and I think uh, when I expand on this one, most people who want to go on stage feel very confident in this area, but they're missing some key pieces of what skills actually are, yeah. like the ability to sell from stage. There's an overconfidence I, I see on that. I see people in two camps. They're either very confident of their skills or not confident enough, right? So um, the other one, obviously, is the tech tools. What tools do speakers need to have? And, um, you know, there's a lot of people who can go out there and sell you a lot of shiny objects. But if you're building this out and you want leverage and growth, there are specific tools. Yep. You need content. You need your content pieces, your signature speeches, your core stories, your press kits, et cetera. Yeah, and the backstory and things like that. Yeah, you need to have your marketing or your, your exposure plan put in place, right? So uh, we did talk a little bit already about messaging, which yeah, is, did. I mean, if you feel this, Inside of you, there is a message. I know that. And you know the feeling I'm talking about, right, Mike? I want people to know about this. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I want them to hear this, right? That's a message. And, and um, clarity of this is something that we are working on all of the time, right? Because we just dig down deeper and deeper. We get uh, new. We're not a finished story, right? So we're always going to be adding to the lesson and to the messaging. Um, building offers is another area where I see people go, oh, I'm going to tell them I'm a coach and that they can join up with my program. There is a specific psychological way to build offers. And I was very good at getting people in a room. This is a natural gift as a theater producer. Where you yeah. big boys, you, on seats. you get the butts in seats. So I know how to do this. So I'd be like, I got this. I'm standing in front of a group. Look at me go. I have skills that people like me. Okay, so I've got likability and people are listening and this is, they're applauding, yay. And then I make an offer and they go, you're real cool. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, what fundamentally went bad here? You've got to know that there's a psychological way of presenting an offer. Yeah. And there's variables that you have to take into consideration, right? And I do work a lot with people, but I'll give you some examples so that I don't seem esoteric and only come and see me not talk. But for an example, I mean, when I'm doing an offer for my year long program, which is $15,000, I wouldn't go to a cold audience and, and have 10 minutes and make that pitch. No. And I see that mistake, right? I'm, yeah. I'm You've not- You've got to build value, Jackie, haven't you? You've got to position and build value. There's a, and there's when you're doing it. Like there's, you know, you're going to make an offer at a certain time and you're going to be listening for the p- patterns of objection, objections. And you're, it's a dance, um, you know, you're looking at the audience as part of what the offer is. Are they nodding? Are they leaning in? Are they yeah. with you? Or, okay, they're not, if the body language is back. You got to make some adjustments while you're standing on the stage. Yeah, you got to be dynamic <laughs> and make it <laughs> and adjust <Yeah>. quickly. <laughs> adjust quickly, right? So you've got to have that skill of being willing to be bad, which is what I talk a lot about, yeah. or the ability to pivot, which is, uh, so Suzanne Evans, you know who Suzanne Evans is? Yep. Suzanne Evans um, spoke at one of my events. She's, a, she's an amazing woman, and she was also doing a little bit of coaching for me at one of my bigger events. She was coaching me personally. I had her there. Yep. And uh, she goes on stage, and she tells the, the audience, never coach from stage. It's too dangerous. Have your stuff together and blah, blah, blah. I get to the green room, and she goes, okay, in the next segment, forget what you're going to do. Just do some live coaching. And I'm like, <laughs> I heard you say that to people, right? And she goes, no, I did say that because most people aren't clear on, on what they're talking about. You're very, very in tune with everything you do. And when you can do that, yes, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, we're just, we're just, sorry, just for the orders there, we just had a, a, something collapse in the, in the thing studio there. Sorry about that, Jackie. Just rewind back up, just back up a couple of minutes. We just lost that there. Oh, sure. Um, so I think you were saying that you were very clear and intuitive and things like that. I do apologize. Very clear on when you really know your audience, when you're yeah. very, when you work your message, when you look at your offers and those objections, you can always talk to people. You now have that, that increase and that rise in confidence. 
this doesn't happen the first time you're out. So this is why we have another pillar, which is content. Yep. Get your stuff written down. Have I, I don't know how many people who are speakers who I say, who has a signature speech and they don't. <laughs> We gotta work on this all the time, right? We're it's a, it's amazing this. that they just go and babble and they just don't have a framework and they don't have a backstory or don't have any yeah. you know, structure. I, I, I see it all. Well, I don't see it all the time, but I see it, you know a lot of time. And I think you know if you just put that bit of effort in, whether that's got a Toastmasters and learn, come to Jackie learn, but it doesn't matter. But just you know, it's like it's like being a joiner or a builder and not practicing your craft. It is a craft, exactly that, isn't it? You know, and it's that commitment to do it. There's a commitment. And also I think people get very nervous that if they write something down or they, they plant that flag, that they're now married to that forever. And, <laughs> and I get why we would feel that way because it's hard enough to be a, an entrepreneur. Now be an entrepreneur who's going to stand on a stage. <laughs> there, people judge us because as an entrepreneur, we're, uh, we're evolving. We don't have a winding path like, oh, here's my ducks. They're in a row. And people say, oh, so you're doing that now? And it's like, no, I'm also now adding this into my, to my building of who I am. I'm yeah. completing my circle of experience. And it's not a winding path. And society wants you to know what you're going to be when you grow up. And what is it exactly that you talk about? And you do need to, to have confidence in, in that messaging. But also you have to have that uh, confidence that you are just adding to, to your story. Yeah. That's all. Love right? it. Love and then obviously exposure, there's consistency. People aren't making a marketing plan. They're like, oh, I'm going to do some Facebook lives, but what's the end game? And you build funnels and you, and you know about funnels. So you know that it's, I mean, when you're putting together a marketing plan, you've got to have something out there to see if it worked or not. Absolutely. <laughs> like, and, and for me, you've got to get that data capture in there. You've got to educate, you've got to nurture, you've got to see where the stop, you know, and, and guys, this is slightly off script, but Jackie won't mind me saying this, but you know, if you're capturing these people, a lot of people just don't buy, you know, because you're selling from the stage, you know, they might want to see some more content after from automation, whether that's email, text, Facebook, social, you know, whatever it would be video, they might want to attend and watch a webinar for you. So, you know, with your funnels and the, the bit of advice I've got slightly off script is don't build it online first, build it offline on a whiteboard or some type of yeah. Where that you know you can you can sort of map out your funnel and see what the journey is and there's a great thing that uh, we learned off Brad Martin down at Six Division, uh, uh, Jackie, um, and he always say you know it's never straight through the funnel. There's detours and there's exits. So if they exit out of here, what happens next? And if the yeah. detour, how do we get them back on play? So again, if any of you guys are really interested in really crushing it that way, you go and check out Brad Martin and the team at Six Division. They're pretty awesome. Oh, yeah. uh, they do, you do a great job. But uh, the point I'm trying to say is that map out your program process, map out your journey, map out your marketing, map out your funnels. And just because you're a speaker, why is that any different to being, you know, a law, you know, a, a lawyer or, you know, a, a building firm or a swimming pool company or a HVAC company? You know, you still need to collect data, you still need to educate, nurture, and you still need to, you know, bring them further into the funnel before maybe hitting them. And yeah, sure, some people might buy straight off the stage if they're, you know, they're really tapped into your message. I was at Inbound last year, um, with HubSpot to Jackie and uh, somebody called Brené Brown, um, you know, and I'd never really connected with her before. So on stage, just wow. And of course I went and bought her books and things like that. But, you know, and, and you know, seen her in, in, in and around online, never really connected to her, but saw her on stage and she just captivated me with this really story, which you really think that it weren't my side of thing. And, you know, I'm, I'm a, not really into the Brené Brown type of stuff, but she totally, totally captivated me. There was Ed Catmull, the, um, the picture, our guy um there was john cena which was a crazy speech that john cena does he's amazing as a businessman speaks fluent mandarin and things like that you wouldn't think about it so these are the speakers that really captivated me and you know i always thought john cena the wwf or e or whatever it is these days wrestler I thought, oh he's, he's just a you know he's just a muscle testosterone you know inflated guy but that guy's a serious businessman he's got his head screwed on he knows what he wants to do the brené brown the ed catmull story from pixar was soul destroying and I've been through a lot of that myself. So when speakers connect with you, then okay, fine. You might be able to yourself from stage, but otherwise get your funnels in place, get your follow up in place and make it happen. So hope you don't mind me hijacking that, uh, but they're real life experiences that I've had. I love it. I'm going to put it into an exact formula right here for you. What I, what I have. So here's a year long program. That's $15,000 that I make from stage at a three day event. Now it would be wonderful and uh, like magical and, Rainbows, sunshine, and unicorns, if all I had to do was stand on stage for three days and I'd hit my target sales goals, but I'm not going to. 
of course I'm going to get early adopters. People who walk in that room who've never heard from you, who connected right away, but they are yeah. a small percentage and you invest a lot of time in making this happen. Yeah. So I looked at, okay, well, first they've got to see you a bunch of times and they're not going to buy from you. So this is like the videos and getting them to start following you. And it's a, it's a long game. Getting them to a place where they're opening their wallet, which sounds crass, but it's, it is what it is. It's either, um, did they buy something online for like a book or did they buy a $250 session? And then, uh, you know, did they then at some point come into our room or online to listen to you more, get to know you more? Yep. And I found that if they go through a process where they are purchasing something around the number of $250 and get themselves into a three-day event, I have a qualified lead which is not that big of a funnel. Like it's a big jump from 250 to, to 15,000, but Absolutely. I do it over and over again, because that is what I know is my shortest path that's going to achieve my goal. Yep. Um, that also comes with the, the proviso that I spend a lot of time online making sure that I'm out there. It's a consistency thing, right? You as well. Practice what you preach as well. Practice what you preach. It's about consistency followed up by a strategy. It's yep. not just, oh, I'm going to be consistent and do my Facebook lives and have people clap. It's about what do I want them to do every time they're watching this? Yeah. Even the partner con video that I made no offer was being ridiculous. My goal was I didn't want to network that hard. <laughs> I wanted it to already be easy, yeah. <laughs> which it was, right? I wanted people to already kind of have a feeling of who I was. Everything yeah. has a purpose with it right yeah you certainly achieved that and uh, you know like i say we get the strategy behind it uh, you know and strategy as we know is the starting point of everything don't just try and go and make it happen without thinking it through so yeah. but no that's great on the six pillars uh, jackie i think that gives great and we'll list those out and we'll you know so we'll put some links to the website at purepotentials.com sure. well. yeah so i suppose i know we've touched on things in and out and as we start to come and wrap on this um coming up to the back end of the podcast here now um, I know we've touched on a little bit of this as we've weaved in and out, but just for bringing it out and making it really clear for the listeners. Um, mm -hmm. If we were to sort of say, what is the necessary steps the audience needs to take to learn how to fill events and workshops? And I know you've talked about strategy and things like that, but you know, what, what would they do? Could you sort of expand on that and sort yeah. of give them a tip too? You mentioned about putting butts on seats as a theater, yeah. uh, things like that. You know, share a little bit of that experience with the audience if you would. Um, number one, if you want to fill rooms, you've got to obviously have some kind of a value proposition. How you get there is not how you think it is. So the first thing I, I know and I would tell you is that if you have a message to share, you want to be on stage, you're a speaker, accept that, and speakers are verbal processors. Yep. That means you need to find opportunities to get out there and practice. I've, put, I've uh, built my speaking organization based on the fact that you can come and speak for free. Yep. You can say whatever you want. You can have a specific period of time and you can get out there and you can share that message because when you say it, you're going to hear your own patterns and you're going to hear your own stories that yep. pop up that you weren't expecting and you're going to see the relevance and the flashlight's going to shine on you first. So if you don't want to work with anybody, because I thought, you know, my, I say my mission all the time is like your words matter, your message matters. I'm not saying, but only if you give me $15,000. <laughs> That's why I have the other side of what I do from the mission pers perspective, which is get on a stage, like you said, go to Toastmasters, go to uh, Pure Potential Speakers Clubs, go to Meetup, get, make your own events, get out there and keep talking and, you'll, and documenting what's resonating with the people. Look for the lean-ins, look for where they're, the words that they want to hear you say. Watch yeah. for the patterns, that's number one. Um, number two is, you know, be you and get past the the thinking that rigid thinking that you have to do it the same way that like you said Gary Vee or or you know Brendan Burchard or Oprah or Tony Robbins you gotta you've gotta be out there and you've gotta be doing it like you and knowing what you offer Absolutely. and when you have your offer put together get it's a matter of it's very simple billing events is very simple if you know what you offer and you tell people that you're going to give them uh, a snippet of this or you're going to give them part of this at an event they want to come they will be in the room and then you're going to get out there and you're going to, um, <laughs> you're going to sometimes blow it epically. So be willing to be bad, right? Be, be okay with, um, you know, if you're putting on an event and you're investing time, energy, and money, how do you mitigate the risk? Maybe get some sponsors up on the front and uh, get your film crew to film it. So maybe you can use part of that for collateral later. 
Oh. Repurposing content is a lot what we used to do. We always had them filmed and, you know, multi-camera angles. We used to stick a GoPro on a sucker on the wall there. We'd had a couple of SLRs at the back. We didn't even have a big amount of gear to start with. No major yeah. film crews, but just yeah. a couple of SLRs. We, we bought a road, um, what was it? Road filmmaker kit. So we used to have the box on the back, the, you know, the lav mic plugged in and then a wireless to the SLR. And I think it was about, you know, about yeah. 280 pounds, 300 pounds, about $400 for that as a, as a mic, which is a good quality mic but just a standard SLR that we started with and then you build up into better mic systems and yeah. things like that as you, as you keep going. But you just get out there and the, the amount of times I'm thinking, oh, I went off track there and then we'd put the content, the video up to Rev and then we'd have that transcribed and captioned and then we could turn it into blogs and different other pieces of content yeah. and ebooks. So you could repurpose it. Even if you make a goof of it, you can repurpose it and edit yeah. it afterwards. So always record it is what I always say. So there's a ton. I always say this, building a speaking business, there's a ton of moving parts and you've got to, you know, test and tweak and it's, it's a business. There's a lot to it. Correct. But if you're going to start, I'm going to say the three things that I think you need to remember, which is your message, what you offer, and then grit. <laughs> <laughs> Get your foot up it. there, one foot in front, of, uh, in front of each other and do some stuff. Right? Oh, absolutely. They're great three pro tips there, Jackie. Uh, I, I really appreciate that. And, you know, as we wrap up now, I, I, seriously, I really enjoyed speaking to you. And uh, I realize how bad I am at my public speaking. So I think I need to sort of come into pure potentials and take a look at that. Because, you know, I don't do as much as I used to do by a country mile. Um, but, you know, when you make, you talk through the processes, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm pretty cool at that. Or I think I'm pretty cool yeah. at that. But hey, I've got some work to do here. So if you want to uh, connect with Jackie, as I say, um, head over to purepotentials.com. If you want to go over to, uh, to Facebook, go to Facebook com forward slash groups forward slash, slash the speakers labs um, and take a look at that connect there there's some free templates that you can download there to get started um, and I'm sure you can pick up Jackie on social media and I'm sure Jackie if they sent you a message you'd be happy to help them initially and uh, get those questions of course. yeah of course they can go to the pure potentials uh, Facebook page yep or if they find me send me a message you know? yeah that's right. I really appreciate that and again if you if you're struggling to pick that up just shoot us a message at hashtag the open mic or hashtag growth engine and we'll get that message forward to Jackie to get that set out for you so I really appreciate your time and experience Jackie thanks ever so much for adding so 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 much value um, you know building a lucrative speaking business is something that you've done um, you know congratulations for the results and the revenue that you've done um, and as I say to check out what Jackie and the team are doing head over to purepotentials.com online and uh, as I say get started with those free templates so thanks for joining us from Canada today it's been awesome Ah, thank you so much for having me. I enjoyed talking to you as well. And I love what you're doing. I love what you're about. Oh, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much indeed. So all the entrepreneurs out there, budding speakers, go check Jackie out. And as always, we appreciate you tuning into the open mic. And if you're serious about getting forward, go into the next level, make sure that you're getting the game, go do the hustle, go make it happen. And we're going to see you on next week's show. Thanks for tuning in. You have been listening to The Open Mic, brought to you by The Success Hub. To find out more and to get the resources we have mentioned in this podcast episode, simply visit blog.thesuccesshub.io and view the podcast section. Thanks for listening and we look forward to catching up with you in our next episode. This podcast and associated materials is published under copyright to The Success Hub. All rights reserved. No reproduction of this material is permitted.